As you might have heard, there is a huge Ebola outbreak in West Africa right now. Um, the death toll is now past 900 people. And of course, authorities and healthcare officials are doing their best to try to contain it. Unfortunately, there were two US doctors that were infected with the virus while they were trying to help victims in West Africa. And uh, those two individuals have been flown to Atlanta in order to get the treatment necessary to survive. They specifically went to the uh, Emeroy Healthcare Facility, and again, it is in Atlanta. And since there's a lot of ignorance in involving this story, and a lot of ignorance toward Ebola, a lot of people think that bringing the infected doctors here to the United States means that the virus is going to spread and that we're all going to die. But that's not the case. Now, very quickly, let me tell you, tell you what Ebola is and what the symptoms are like. Oftentimes, you uh, experience fever-like symptoms, and then you start hemorrhaging through all orifi orifices of your body. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a serious virus. About 60% of people who get it do die as a result. However, it is, it is easily contained, and I will give you all the facts and the details about the virus so you don't have to worry about the stupid fear mongering you're seeing in the mainstream press. This is ripe for fear mongering. Like when you, when we, everybody sees this, the suits, Everybody gets scared. I mean, that, we're all humans, right? I mean, we look, oh, wow, sick, oh my God, look at that. That looks like something out of a movie, and it looks like it's uh, super uh, uh, contagious. But actually, and I don't know if this is going to make you feel any better, but Ebola is aggressively infectious, but it is not highly contagious. Yes, and we Now, that's, that's a rare situation where that's good news. Yes. That's absolutely good news, and I'll tell you more about the virus, how it works, how likely you are to get it. But before I get to all of that, we absolutely have to address the situation with the two doctors that were flown into Atlanta. So the argument by fear mongers like Donald Trump is that, hey, these doctors went to West Africa, they risked their lives, they have to suffer the consequences, they shouldn't come back to the States. That is a ridiculous thing to say. And um, Susan M. Grant, who is uh, the chief nurse at the facility where the doctors are being treated right now, wrote a great piece in the Washington Post where she's explaining why people should stop worrying about this and why the hospital has decided to take care of the, the physicians. She writes the following, people responded viscerally uh, on social media, fearing that we risk spreading Ebola to the United States. The public alarm overlooks the foundational mission of the U.S. medical system. The purpose of any hospital is to care for the ill and advance knowledge about human health. At Emroy, our education, research, dedication, and focus on quality, essentially everything we do, is in preparation to handle these types of cases. She also says that Ebola won't become a threat to the general public from their presence in our facility, but the insight we gain by caring for them will prepare us to better treat emergent diseases that may confront the United States in the future. These Americans generously went to Africa on a humanitarian mission to help eradicate a disease that is especially deadly in countries without our healthcare infrastructure. They deserve the same selflessness from us. So I love that she wrote that piece. I love that she addressed it because what are we supposed to do? These doctors did go there on a humanitarian mission. They are American doctors. And to make the argument that we should just leave them there so they die is absolutely ridiculous and selfish and terrible. And also, if you don't understand anything about the virus, don't go around spreading this stupid fear mongering because it's really alarming people. People are really worried about this. So two things about this. First of all, the, uh, the doctor and the nurse uh, who wound up getting Ebola are American heroes, worldwide heroes, and by the way, they're Christian evangelicals. So they're with Franklin Graham's group. Uh, there's nothing I agree with Franklin Graham on except this. And, and these are good Christians. If all Christians were uh, evangelicals and fundamentalists were like this, then I would love them. No matter how much I disagreed with them, I would be their biggest fan. And I am their biggest fan in this case. These guys go to risk their lives in Africa to save those souls because they think it's what God would want to help the needy. Oh, what blessed Christians. And what do they get in return when they return here? So I, I know these two people are generally banned from the show, but they're related to this story because they've stirred up such fear in the country. Donald Trump says they should suffer the consequences and basically imply that they just die in Africa, right? right? I mean, what a grotesque human being. And now today, Ann Coulter came out and said, it's their fault anyway, they should have been serving their own country. Ann Coulter is a dumb bitch, right? Like she says, she says stupid things to get attention. I don't even, I don't even think 
anything that comes out of her mouth is sincere. I don't even think she believes it. Unfortunately, Donald Trump is really, really freaking stupid. So I think that he genuinely does believe this stuff. So anyway. Uh, no, I agree with you. And, yeah. and that's why we never talk about Ann Coulter, because she's trying to get attention here. Unfortunately, in this case, the two clowns of America have influenced things in a way that have got people, it's some people in a panic. So now let's yes. give them the reality. Okay, so the reality is, let me give you a really quick rundown of the history. So since the first outbreak in 1976, Ebola viruses have infected thousands of people and killed roughly 60% of them. Symptoms can come on very quickly and kill fast. So again, you experience flu-like symptoms and then you start hemorrhaging from various parts of your body, okay? Now, in terms of West Africa, the areas that have uh, seen the impacts of the outbreak include Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, and Nigeria. Now here's the way that the disease spreads because I think a lot of people think that it's highly contagious and if you're in the same building as someone who has it, you're likely to get Ebola as well. That is not the case. The disease spills over into humans often when someone handles or eats undercooked or raw meat from a diseased ape, monkey, or bat. So. That's how it kind of starts off. This is a virus that usually spreads between animals and of course has very fatal consequences for humans. Hey, let me just interject there for a second. The reason it pops up from time to time is because a lot of bats carry Ebola. And so we can't fully get rid of it because at some point a human is gonna have some sort of contact with a bat, maybe uh, somebody eats it in uh, raw meat, et cetera, as Anna explained, and then it pops back up. Because in 2005 and 2006, there were no reported cases of Ebola. Because it is actually, even though grotesque and, and scary, fairly easy to control. Yes, all right, so uh, let's talk about how you contract it. In order to contract Ebola, someone must touch the bloody or bodily fluids, including sweat, urine, and semen of a person or animal who's infected, alive, or dead. People can also catch it through indirect contact with the victim's fluids, such as bleeding or medical equipment. Okay, so let's stop right there really quick. Um, what often happens in, in places like West Africa is people will have the virus and either they don't know that they have the virus or they're too embarrassed to seek medical help. So as a result, they die and their loved ones have absolutely no idea what they died from. They just thought, oh, well, this person was sick. So then they handle the dead body and when they do so, they contract the virus, okay? So handling the dead body is very, very risky and that's the reason why it's, all, it's been spreading so rapidly. And and one more thing, normally uh, in previous instances it came out of Central Africa. In this case it's in West Africa where they haven't had it before. So that's why a lot of people don't know how to handle the bodies. That's why it's spreading a little quicker this time around. Yeah. So there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of ignorance involving uh, Ebola. And not just in the United States, but also West Africa, because people don't have the other education to know how to handle it, right, or how to react to it. So according to the New York Times, some people are afraid that medical workers are causing Ebola, and workers have been threatened with knives, stones, and machetes, their vehicles sometimes surrounded by hostile mobs. And also in the past decade, there have been five people who were, uh, you know, dealing with the situation. They were hemorrhaging, they had the fever symptoms, but they entered the United States to get help. And that did not spread the virus in the United States, so just keep that in mind. Right, look, ignorance is always the greatest enemy. That's why we fight against it all the time. So the people in West Africa, they think that maybe the doctors are giving them the Ebola. No, go to the doctors, and then they go home, and then people have contact with them, and they get Ebola. So, and then sometimes they even threaten doctors. There's a couple of villages that we can't get to right now, because they're threatening the medical professionals. So we know where they are and, and good doctors from across the world are risking their lives to make sure that it doesn't spread, okay? And like Anna said, it's come here before and it's never spread. Yes, and look, these doctors will be quarantined. They're going to be in isolation pods within this uh, facility. Just everyone needs to calm down. It's it's really scary when you start seeing people, public figures, making arguments that you should leave humanitarians and other countries to die because we're worried about a virus spreading when that virus doesn't spread as easily as you think. Right, so the bottom line on this and the most important part is that it is not airborne, okay? So if someone sneezes or they're breathing next to you, you can't get the disease that way. Let me way. just make a really quick correction. So if someone sneezes and there's some exchange of bodily fluid there, uh, right. spit, then there is some risk. Right. Yes. So like if their sneeze goes into your mouth or somehow contacts you, yes, right? But it's not airborne, okay? 
So it, if you're in the second floor and he's on the third floor, you're never going to get it. So that's why in the past we've been able to completely eradicate it. That's why this is actually the worst outbreak we've ever had in human history and 900 people are dead. I mean, look, with the flu, which by the way is airborne, it's wiped off uh, wiped out a, a significant percentage of the earth's population in the past, right? In this case that's not it's very unlikely to happen because you have to have direct contact with their bodily fluids. And we know how to treat it and we've got the facilities here in the US where people are completely cordoned off. That's why it's never spread before. So, yes, it'll spread a little bit more in West Africa because we've got to fight through the fact that a lot of people there don't know about it and don't know how to treat it yet, but professionals from all over the world are going there to make sure that it's contained and by the way, they're the greatest people alive.